All right, guys. Very excited about this sermon. The name of this sermon is going to be called, There's About to Be a Lot of Mans. <laughs> Let me say that again. The name of this sermon is going to be called, There's About to Be a Lot of Mans. And some of you may be listening thinking, well, you, you should know that that's improper grammar. Mans is incorrect. The plural version of the word man is men, not mans. Man with an S. That's incorrect. It's men. And you will be right, but in the case of this sermon, it is very correct. <laughs> and it's not going to make sense to you now why uh, that, that actually makes sense, but it will soon enough. It, it's correct to say mans. There's going to be a lot of mans. Now, why am I calling this sermon that? I'm not going to tell you now. you got to wait to the very end of the sermon to understand why. But in the meantime, let me tell you what the sermon is about. Last month, I talked to you guys about divine connections, and I explained how this is a time uh, of divine connections for a lot of people, very much so. In other words, it's a time for people of God, certain folks to be joined together, to be like teammates, if you will, and it's all ordained by God. In other words, there are certain people that are going to suddenly become like best friends, people that will suddenly become uh, uh, business partners, people that may suddenly become uh, 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 people that, that go into ministry together and build ministries. Different different types of things is what I'm getting at. But but it's it's connections that you have with, with certain people that, that God just places in your life at the right place at the right time to, to uh, make some things happen, to cause an impact in the kingdom of God, to cause an impact in your town or community or, or possibly worldwide. But there are things that God's trying to do and he's connecting the right people for purpose purpose for destiny and for a purpose and so that's what it's all about but what I want to talk to you about in this particular sermon is I want to go more in detail about it because I touched on it last month but I need to go in more detail and what I'm going to talk to you about is there are three things that are not so obvious when it comes to the subject of divine connections that you need to know so we're going to get into this. I'm going to jump right in, and I'm not going to be before you too long. I don't want to, to, to drag this out too long. But there's three places we're going to be looking in. The first is John chapter 10. The, the second one is going to be Luke chapter 5. And the last one will be Numbers chapter 12. So starting here at John chapter 10 verse 10 it says this and this is jesus speaking our lord and savior speaking he says this the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy i am come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly now before i read on let me pause and just sit on this for just a moment jesus describes two types of people himself and those that would be contrary to him. We use this to, to often talk about the devil, but also this can just be people, people used by the enemy, by the devil, or people that are just in their flesh. Uh, people that are, in, uh, that are in enmity with the Lord, they are the type of people that they come in to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Jesus lets us know that he comes to give. He doesn't come to take like the enemy does, but to give life and to give life more abundant. Now, understand that this is similar to how it is with just people in general. You have people that they're like the first half of this verse. They, they come into people's lives for a, 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 a negative purpose, a hidden agenda. They come in and they just want to kill. They want to steal. They want to destroy. They want to cause problems. They want to sow discord. They just want to start drama. They're, they're just a bunch of mess. But then you've got folks who they mean you well. They really love you. They care about you. They want the best for you and they're loving to you and they're giving and they just really want the best for you and they want to see you at, at your best potential so you've got people that they can be on either side of the scale you got people that are like the first half of this verse and the second half and so with that said one obvious thing about divine connections is that uh, true divine connections they are not going to be like the first half of this they are not going to be people who come in to take from you and to hurt you and to 
to harm you that's not of God but rather they would be like the second half they 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 come to to enrich and enhance your life to make it more abundant so that's something obvious but here's what you have to see that's not so obvious let's keep reading starting at verse 11 it says I am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep but he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep the hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep so what's being said here is this jesus is saying you've got two different types of folks that will will uh lead people you you've got people like me uh, he says i am the good shepherd i protect the sheep i really watch out for them but a hireling is someone who well that's just it they're a hireling so they're not gonna stick around if a wolf shows up if true trouble shows up they're not gonna stick around in other words a hireling will start out seeming like a good shepherd because they're there they're protecting they're watching out for a flock come on just like a good shepherd a true listen a true leader from the heart someone that's there because it's in their heart to be there a hireling will start out being just like a good shepherd but when trouble comes when things are not so easy when things are not uh going so well a hireling because they're a hireling will flee but someone who is a good shepherd will risk their life put their life on the line to watch out for the flock and we use this to talk about leadership you know real true leaders versus leaders that are really not leaders from the heart they've got the the, the position and the title but it's not really in them so so we get all that but i want to use this to show you something about divine connections and it's this right here there are listen counterfeit divine connections there are counterfeit divine connections in other words there are people who listen it's obvious from from what i read in in verse 10 there are people who it's going to be obvious that they're from the enemy or that they are an enemy that they're not the real deal they're not a true divine connection but you got to understand there are so, there is such a thing as a counterfeit in other words they'll come in looking and acting and talking and seeming like someone who really cares the hireling come on but when crap hits the fan so to speak pew, they're gone or they'll do something when you least expect it or say something that shows their true colors that shows how they really feel let them get mad enough about something and and watch the words that roll off their tongue come on they seemed the part at first until it got a little hectic until it wasn't easy and fun anymore a storm came and they let you know what the deal really was they were a hireling they were someone used by the enemy greatly to be deceitful to deceive so so you've got those that are not that are obvious that they're not divine connections but then you got those that may be a counterfeit someone that that may try to work out the part but you will find out sooner or later that they're not the real deal so how do you deal with that pray now in advance don't wait till you find out the stuff pray ahead of time start praying now lord you know yes bring divine connections but lord reveal to me those that may be sent by the enemy to be a counterfeit let me not always have to find out the hard way that someone is a counterfeit lord reveal it and don't be mad when you when you see someone's true colors don't become angry with the lord when people when certain people start distancing themselves from you and you don't understand why why certain friendships that you think would be awesome friendships seem to fall apart seems to uh, disappear like a, a connection with someone literally is just snip snip like there was a cut made a tie broken and for some it might just be soul ties oh my goodness that, that god's that, listen god are going god's got to snip snip but anyway 
but pray pray now pray ahead of time and even when you see some some suspicious activity so to speak pray on it but even now ahead of time start praying and and pay attention to the to the warning signs so now let me move on to the next one it's luke chapter 5 Starting at verse 37, it says this, and this is Jesus continuing to speak. He says this, and no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles and both are preserved. Now, before I go to that last verse, let's look at this. Jesus is saying no one is, is, is going to put new wine into old bottles because the bottles will burst. New wine needs to go into new bottles so that they are both preserved. And so we must understand that bottles are vessels, something that is a container that can be poured into, and we are vessels, right? We know that as Christians, we are vessels for the Lord. We, we are used by the Lord. And sometimes we have to be made anew. It, it, a lot of it a lot of it has to do with the renewing of our minds sometimes our our minds need to be renewed we 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 need to have new outlooks and new perspectives on life sometimes god has to have us go through things to learn things and to grow us and mature us but he does things that causes us to become new and to grow in him and the things of him so it's like we're made new new vessels and with being a new vessel he can pour into us more and better and greater at a greater capacity he can pour new wine into us his spirit can flow in us greater so with that said listen here's something that may not be so obvious about divine connections a lot of times we think that a divine connection is someone new entering into our life and it can be but I'm here to let you know that whoever this is for, some of these divine connections may not even be new people. It will be someone from your past who is now new. <laughs> and, and here's the kicker. It might not just be other people that are being made anew. You are being made anew for them. They're your divine connection, but you might be theirs. God's done some work on you, but he's done some work on somebody else for y'all to be connected so they could be new or they could be from old but they've been made anew you are someone else's past but you've been made anew come on <laughs> so 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 now that you're made anew or someone else has been made anew or both he can use you or use them at a greater capacity they're not that old man anymore or that old woman anymore they're a better version of themselves. You're a better version of yourself. You're you. You're just better now. So now, certain things that God can, can use y'all for now can be brought forth and manifested because y'all were the right people, but he just couldn't use y'all back then because <clears throat> y'all were still the old man. But because you've been made anew now, he can pour the new wine into you. He can pour new ideas into you, new business ventures into you, new books into you, new TV shows into you. I don't know. He can put something new in you now or them or, or both of y'all. But it's it. listen, process had to take place. Time had to go by and, and some things had to be worked out and worked into y'all so that now the connection is better now there's purpose in the connection matter of fact i had a conversation with somebody just a few weeks ago we were talking and it's somebody that i i i knew her through somebody you know how you know somebody through a friend through a friend through a friend but but we've recently been talking more and it's funny because when we were talking she was saying some stuff that really stirred me in my spirit but but she said you know she said she said i really wish we had been friends back in school I wish we had been friends back in high school because I really think we would have been good friends to each other and I think we really could have helped each other through some stuff. And I totally 100% agreed, but then when I thought about it, I thought maybe it just wasn't, maybe the timing just wasn't quite together. Maybe the timing was just off. 
maybe it made sense for us to know each other through people but to not really know no know each other but now that that we have both been going through these inner changes and we're growing and maturing and, and, and seeing all these things in, in, in different lights and different perspectives. Now it makes sense that we click more. See what I'm saying? Because there's some newness going on. There. Okay, y'all got the point. But now watch this. Watch this. Look at this last verse, 39. It says, no man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new, for he saith the old is better. <laughs> now this is another reason why now that that person or those people from the past can now be a part of your present and future <clears throat> the reason why is because if god had tried to make something work in the past you would have been like like if you were still old and they were a new you 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 wouldn't have been able to fully connect with them. You would have been like, no, I I I I like the old them better. I like how they used to be better. Cause that's what it says there. When, when someone's used to that old wine and they try the new, they're like, eh, the old's better. But now you'll appreciate the new. Or now they will appreciate the new. Maybe they didn't quite appreciate certain things and certain aspects about you back then, but now they can appreciate. They're not caught up in the old. They see that, that good new in you. It's you. It's just a better you. It's the God in you. Okay. Now, last place, Numbers chapter 12, and I'll get out of your way. Numbers chapter 12, one of my favorite stories in the book of Numbers. I've been reading the, the book of Numbers quite a bit lately, and, and man, yeah, yeah, this is a good book. So Numbers chapter 12, let's look at it. It says this, and Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall be shall he behold. Wherefore then we then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days. And after that, let her be received in again. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. So we see Moses. Moses marries an Ethiopian woman. He marries an African woman. And his brother Aaron and his sister Miriam have an issue with it. They're mad. They're talking trash. They got their comments, their stuff to say. 
but God hears it and he's not pleased about it. So he 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 calls the three of them out, gets them away from everybody, but then he he gets a hold of Aaron and Miriam separate and he he shuts it down. He's saying, "Listen, what he's doing is cool." You know, I'll speak to prophets. I got prophets I'll speak to. But Moses, I'll speak to him mouth to mouth. I'll speak to him face to face. Y'all know this. So if I had had a problem with Moses marrying this woman, he would have knew it. He would have knew it before he married her. He would have knew it. But if I don't have a problem with it, then why do you? He shut it down. Here's the final point about things that are not so obvious about divine connections. One type of divine connection, of course, is marriage. And a lot of times, you know, we quote scripture. We say, oh, oh, oh what God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. And, and that's true. But one of the things that we also say is, you know, when, when, when God gives you the one, the world's not going to like it. The world's going to hate it. And that can be true, but you must understand that the truth of the matter is when it comes to God giving you the one. Sure, some of the people in the world might not like it, but the truth of the matter is you cannot think that all the people who are not quote unquote of the world are going to like it. In other words, uh, listen, Christian folks will be the main ones that get mad. They get jealous of it. They get jealous of your marriage that has something bad to say about the marriage or who you're married to based off of some dumb stuff. People in your very own church will shun you. And guess what? Just like how five minutes ago they were quoting what the Lord hath joined together. Let no man put asunder. Come on. Now it's your turn to preach it. <laughs> right? Now you got to remind them of that. Or or not, you you know you don't you don't have to answer to anybody. You don't have to explain to them, really. Oh, here we go. Come on, come on. They'll have their lame things that they say, their lame excuses. Well, well, you know, uh, look at all the racism that you've endured, and you've endured all this racism. And instead of marrying somebody uh, of your race, you done went and married somebody outside of your race, knowing it's just gonna make stuff hard. Now, they don't care that that person is the one. They'll, they'll, listen, you and the person you married are both adults, but one of y'all is, is significantly a little bit older than the other. Now they got something to say about an age gap. But y'all are both adults. One of y'all may have had a nice life growing up and somebody else that had a, a rough, poor past. And now you got people saying that, that, that you're out of their league or they're out of your league. You're not good enough. They're not good enough. They talk about somebody's past. Well, you know, he, he, he used to be a player. He used to be a womanizer. But that's all they can do is bring up his past. They're not worried about whether or not they're tre he's treating you right now. Or they'll say, oh, well, you know, you know she, she used to mess around a lot back in the day. Okay, but that's her past. Because <laughs> when people are made a new, going back to that new vessel, new wine, but, but they just want to talk about how they used to remember them back in the day. Anyway, but y'all get my point. Y'all get my point. So understand, number one, that, that sometimes there are counterfeits, counterfeit divine connections, pray on it. Another thing that you must understand is this right here. That it won't just be the world that has a problem with your relationship. Sometimes it could be the ones you love. Sometimes it's fellow Christians, even though the Lord has joined y'all. And you got to understand that if God has put this together, not everybody has to like it. Not everybody has to accept it. Not everybody has to agree with it. Why? Because not everybody's God. And understand that not all divine connections are new people, but sometimes they're old who have been made anew. And maybe it's you or both. So 
now that I've said all this, oh, well, let me say this. What's really cool about God shutting that down, shutting uh, 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 Aaron and Miriam down. Aaron is a priest. Miriam is the one that we saw in Exodus that when, when Moses had got, uh, led the children of Israel out of Egypt and God, you know, caused the, the, the sea to come down and destroy uh, Pharaoh and the chariots and everything. Miriam was the one that says that she was a prophetess. She got out a timbrel or tambourine and started playing that instrument and leading people into worship and praise. So you've got Aaron, who's a priest, Miriam, who's a prophetess slash musician slash worship leader. And God didn't even care. He shut it down. He gave them the business. He told them, hey, uh-uh, don't come up against Moses. In other words, God's not going to care about titles and positions. Listen, if, if God brings your marriage together, he don't care who, whether it be somebody of the world or somebody in the church, whether it be somebody in the congregation or somebody in the pulpit, it, it, it don't matter who it is. God, listen, pray on it. God will step in. He'll intervene, intervene and be like, look, <laughs> you knew what the deal was up front. Shut it up. <laughs> let's move on so so last thing that i wanted to say going to the title of this message i said the name was there's about to be a lot of mans when god does what he's about to do with you there's going to be people who have overlooked you who have pushed you to the side who have rejected and neglected you and they're gonna look and they're gonna be like man Oh, man, I, I should have stayed friends with them. Oh, man, I never should have betrayed them. Oh, man, I never should have turned my back on them. Oh, man, they got it good. Now I, I should have dated them. I should have stayed in a relationship with them. I, I didn't stay with them because they didn't have their life all together, even though they treated me right. But I traded them for somebody who had it going on but treated me like crap. So now I'm alone and I'm single, and now they looking good now, but I can't get with them now. Oh, man. Man, dang. Oh, man. See, man, I knew. Oh, man. It's, it's, <laughs> it's supposed to be a lot of mans. Not me and mans. Oh, man. It's a lot of people saying man. Never mind. Darn. <laughs> That's the end of the sermon. Heavenly Father, I thank you for another time to minister another word. I pray, Lord, that those who need this message would tune in and hear it and receive it. Lord, I love you. I thank you, Lord. Let your people be encouraged by this word. Let your people just press in and pray and, and believe for what you're going to do for them this year, Lord. Bring divine connections, Lord. Cause your people to be at the right place at the right time to see and hear the right things and meet the right people. Bless your people, Lord, and I give you the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.